Hi, I'm very glad to not be seating, uh, sitting in a chair anymore. <laughs> I think we're all kind of uh, at the end of our day. Um, I'm bordering Gen Z, so I'm reading from my iPhone. <laughs> Um, yeah, my name is Kiki Lennart. I am recent. I've recently started working at the Netherlands Institute for Sound and Vision as an advisor in new media preservation. And uh, before that, I was doing an embedded research at Sound and Vision, uh, researching this. This is the the result of that research. Um, okay. <laughs> um, I can go one. So as the material world and the virtual world are becoming increasingly intertwined, artists are reflecting upon these developments using digital, uh, similar digital mediums to convey their message. This contemporary reality presents issues for preserving artworks that use these modern technologies to foster immersive experiences. And institutes in charge of the preservation of immersive media are struggling to keep up with the technological developments, which we are discussing here today. Um, they are forced to define their own strategies, and as it is inevitable that immersive media will become obsolete, documentation can function as the final remaining trace of the, of the artwork. The topics of documentation for preservation and the fragility of media formats are not new. The idea is making sense of existing practices and choosing the right strategy for a specific case. So, um, the research originated from an exploration of the Preserving Immersive Media Knowledge Base, which was discussed yesterday at the workshop, and also presented at No Time to Wait last year. Um, it is a centralized knowledge hub that aims to support individuals and institutions dealing with the task of preserving immersive media. And the knowledge base is the outcome of Tate's Preserving Immersive Media Project, with funding from the Netherlands Institute for Sound and Vision. It is a resource created to help share information between members of the digital preservation community who are caring for virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed reality, and other similar materials. Um, these are some examples of cases that are included in the knowledge base uh, currently. And um, clockwise, they are called Zone Interdeed by Judd and Wachter. That's an interactive 3D uh, installation. And the right on the top is <laughs> Passage Park number seven by Studer and Van der Berg, which is a 360 video. And the bottom one is We Were Looking for Ourselves and Each Other by Melody Misset, which is a virtual reality artwork. Um, so what is the urgency for preserving immersive media? Media scholars and professionals are calling for action in the preservation of our collective digital heritage, especially immersive media. As these objects are extremely ephemeral and unless immediate steps are taken, valuable content can be lost to future generations. By contributing to the ongoing efforts of preserving immersive media, the research pledges to make holistic documentation an embedded practice. It also supports the safeguarding of valuable digital heritage in an effort to consolidate its societal relevance. In addition, the amount of immersive media content is increasing rapidly and artists are using digital tools and digital media um, in non-standardized explorative ways, making them difficult to preserve. This demands heritage organizations to define a preservation practice for those materials at high speed as the amount of content is increasing rapidly. The research was carried out using a, a collection of methods to answer the question, how can the preserving immersive media knowledge base support cultural institutions in the process of documenting immersive media? Interviews with professionals and um, attended seminars function to grasp the sentiment in the field. And a com combination of desk research and case studies served as methods to define an operable toolbox. The overarching message of the research can be summarized into these four points. Um, approach documentation with the aim to capture the behavior of an immersive media as opposed to single iterations. Collecting a combination of content as documentation to support weight decision maker by stewards in the future. Consolidate the societal relevance of immersive media as heritage for future generations. And lastly, emphasizing documentation as a strategy to preserve immersive media.
The main results uh, were these three outcomes, and uh, the first being a synthesis of documentation strategies, the second is an advocacy for holistic documentation, and the final one is an implementation of a procedural framework, which I will discuss now. Um, the research presents an overview of widely acknowledged documentation strategies resulting from esteemed projects by several institutions working to preserve media art. Um, I think you might be familiar with some of these. Um, they are Forging the Future, Capturing and Stable Media, Matters in Media, a uh, project by Rhizome and Lima's Future Proof. I will not elaborate on their content as I hope some of you know those, but you can uh, read about it in the uh, project, but also they are uh, running online as well. Um, the table in which the synthesis is presented provides an overview of the best, best practices for the documentation of media art, making clear how the various documentation strategies relate to each other. By analyzing a specific immersive media documentation, one can identify which document, uh, documentation phase and characteristics fit best to further develop the documentation using the tools that are uh, presented in the synthesis. In doing so, the synthesis can guide individuals or institutions in defining a documentation strategy that fits their institution or aim or documentation phase. Um, column one and five, so documentation phase and characteristics, can be used to select the most suitable documentation tool to complement the current documents in order to form a holistic understanding of the case. Um, in doing so, formulating an increasingly holistic strategy defined specifically for the case that is documented. And from an institutional perspective, column four and five, institutional aim and characteristics can function to define a more general documentation strategy to be in accordance with the mission of the respective institution. For example, if an institution's aim is archiving, you can see in column four that capturing and stable media and rhizome fit that description. The institution should then consider whether they want to put more emphasis on illustrating different iterations or standardization. A combination of both tools could also present a relevant strategy to define a documentation practice, but will be more time and resource consuming. And the procedural framework um, that was used was um, presented in Annette Decker's chapter, Enjoying the Gap, Comparing Contemporary Documentation in Preserving and Exhibiting Media Art Challenges and Perspective. Decker proposes a nonlinear three-phase framework divided into process, presentation, and recreation, uh, which was used to test the documentation of the selected cases in order to recommend additional tools and strategies. Decker defines the different stages as follows. Documentation as process, in which documentation is seen as a tool in decision-making processes during the development of the work. Documentation as presentation, or the creation of audio-visual material about the work and documentation for recreation in the future. The procedural framework fosters a contemporary approach to preservation by focusing less on authenticity and the singular original, examining cases in different stages of their existence and uh, allows for evaluation of the artwork in different iterations. And I'll talk a bit more about the, this is the thing with putting videos in your presentation. I will talk some more about uh, one of my case studies, uh, which I wanted to show to kind of like give you a feel of the, yeah. <laughs> um, so this is a still image of the case. The case studies were explored by interviewing the artists and by reviewing the documentation they supplied me with, uh, as well as the other online sources that could provide uh, insights into the documentation. The documentation for this artwork was twofold. Uh, it had a public compo component, mainly consisting of photo and video image, and a private documentation consisted of uh, documents and um, insights into the AI learning for the uh, interactive installation. Uh, for now, uh, the artist perceives the documentation as sufficient for the goal of presentation and accessibility. But to foresee alternative ways of presentation or acquisition, the documentation could benefit from an elaboration on the recreation phase, establishing the artist's intent in regard to the preservation guidelines. 
The former can be achieved by formulating uh, documents in regard to the documentation phase of collection and creation, which you can see down below, which is a, a screenshot from the synthesis. And to complement the existing documentation, for forging the future uh, offers a fitting strategy to further elaborate on the recreation phase of the artwork. This will foster a focus on the behavior of the artwork as well as the artist's intent by imagining iterations and preservation strategies for the future. Um, the recommendations that the research uh, provided are these four bullet points. Uh, while a holistic documentation consisting of multiple tools is ideal, the presentation of the synthesis with the strategies alongside each other also allows for a selection of the best suitable strategy if the circumstances do not allow for an in-depth hol holistic documentation. The research uh, recommends that the documentation is arranged according to Becker's three, phase, uh, three phases to take the nature of immersive media into consideration during the documentation process. Uh, third, the importance and value of good documentation should be, con uh, should be emphasized, leading to a translation of this into value and budgets and time planning, giving those responsible more time and reward for adequate documentation. Finally, documentation can function to capture the artist's intent and behavior of the artwork in formats that can already be preserved for the long term in storage and archives. To summarize, this research aims to be a call to action as well as a reinforcement for the relevance of documentation for the preservation of immersive media. Um, currently, there might not yet be universally agreed upon best practices and technological solutions, but we are able to think about what good practices might look like. The challenge of dynamically preserving immersive media is far from solved, but we <laughs> the aim to <laughs> document holistically can facilitate a shift and support institutions in anticipating obsolescence. Thank you. <laughs> oh, wow.